because there's palm muting and then there's chugging because power chords will only get you so far. We'll look at why you need to get good at these techniques and I'll show you an exercise for each one. Alternate picking is the foundation of a solid riff. It needs to be clean, needs to be even and in time. If not, you're going straight to sloppy town. Alright, so we're playing around position four of E minor pentatonic. We got E, B, D, and E. And we're stretching out a bit around position two because I want to hit B to play the E minor triad. So E, G, and B. And I'm borrowing C sharp from the E Dorian. And then lastly, I'm playing a E minor pentatonic with some chromatic. Now alternate picking is very efficient, but down picking sounds huge. And plus, you can't play any Metallica without building up some decent down-picking stamina. So we're alternating between A, E, and three notes on the fifth string. So we got E, E flat, D, and we're muting everything on the, uh, on the E string. So. then chug the whole thing, right? So E, F, F sharp, G. So a bit slower. There is nothing better than a strong, powerful chorus, right? Well, a good strumming technique is one of the best way to get there. You need a very relaxed movement in the wrist. You need to hit the strings evenly with the same strength and the same number of string every time. Record yourself, it helps. So we start with a B sus two. According to Guitar Pro, it's a D major 7 slash B, but Guitar Pro can eat a bag of D. Then I got a funky little E minor. Uh, playing a C shape at the G position, might wonder why is it not a G then? I'm not playing any D notes, I'm playing only E minor triad notes. So E, G, B, G, G again, and E. It's just E minor triad. Then I'm playing G, but with open first and second string. So I'm adding an E and a B. So it's a G6. Same thing with the A. I'm adding E and B open. So now it's A added nine. Ever tried playing an A power chord without hitting all of the other strings? That's so not rock and roll, right? We need to be able to... That's how you get that snappy sound, right? You need a fat strumming movement. And the answer for that is string muting. So you're using your fretting hands to mute unwanted strings. In our case, the E and the two uh, smallest strings. So all I'm hearing is string uh, five, four, and three. So 
So I'm doing a funny E minor here. I got the root, I got the G, the third, and another root. So my index finger is muting the fifth string and also the smallest string. Now we're sliding over to D. Same basic shape, right? But I'm playing the D root with my middle finger. Then again, I got my third and my octave. And my, ring, my middle finger is muting the sixth string. Then I'm doing, what is that? It's a B5, right? So my index is blocking, muting the, the, the highest strings. Then we're sliding over to a G with a major seven, right? Because we're keeping it from the other chord. I love doing that. And same thing. My index is muting all of these uh, highest strings. So I'm doing something funky with the rhythm. I didn't need to, but uh, it's spicy and spicy is good. So I'm counting seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the other chord. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So I'm not counting seven and nine. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Doing the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, there's no modern metal without palm mutings. There just isn't. That's why we live down here. And that's why country and blues player, they think we have a weird picking techniques because they, they live up here, right? Where it's smooth and shit. But we live and we're gonna die down here close to the bridge. So that's a riff I kind of maybe totally ripped off Ice Earth, uh, but you can't prove it. So I'm alternating between a pull-off and three chugs. So we're playing eighth note, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm counting one and two and three and four. So one and two and three and four and on the four and we're playing G. One and two and three and four. Right? One and two and three and four. The last time on the third, I'm doing. Right? E, F sharp, G, C, B, back to E. A flat, sliding to B. So that last part is one and two and three. I can't count when I'm doing that, sorry. <laughs> one and two and three. I try to count, I can't do it. One and two and three and four and one and two and one and two and three and four. Yeah. Now there's palm muting and then there's chugging. All right, it's a very simple riff. I'm checking, th I'm checking three time on the E, then doing a B flat five, but with a sharp five. So it's not, it's, right? And then chug, 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 chug. And chug, 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 chug. So how do you chug? You go a bit further away from the bridge, so instead of... See, I'm moving my hand by a few millimeters, right? 
but I'm also digging a lot more. Right? If you try that with a clean amp, it's gonna sound awful. <laughs> so find that sweet spot balance where you're choking just enough of the string and you're digging in strong enough. It also amps to have your pick angle just a tiny bit. It adds some, some string noise. You know, if I'm going straight, if I'm doing more angle, it's adding, it's adding some, some pick sliding in there. I don't know, but it sounds amazing. Because every power chord combination has been done already, we need something new. So by adding other notes than just the root and the fifth, we're expanding our harmonic content by uh, whatever percent. And that's a fact. So here I'm playing the B minor using the G minor shape. All right? Here I'm playing D major using the C shape. And I'm doing something funky again. I'm playing a G. I'm using the G shape, regular, but I'm adding a major seven. So I'm playing root, third, and major seven. And then I'm, since I'm already playing the B and the G sharp, might as well play an E minor sus too, right? I love doing that, just moving the bass. It's great. Sounds huge. Here's the same riff with power chords. I mean, it works, but... So much more interesting. Galloping. Because ta is everywhere in heavy metal. I mean, Iron Maiden made a whole career with the... Uh, right? So if you've never done this, start very slowly. You're playing two quarter notes followed by a third half notes. Right? Instead of going one, two, three, four, you're going one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So try to be as relaxed as possible in your wrist. As you go faster and you see while I'm doing it, I'm starting to get a bit more shoulder in there. That's when I want to go a bit faster, right? So just look at my wrist and my shoulder and you see it happening. So as I'm playing faster, my arm and my shoulder, they tense up a little bit, not too much, but my wrist, my wrist is pretty relaxed the whole time. Don't, uh, if you're doing this and your veins are popping up, you're doing something wrong, right? You're gonna hurt yourself. I'm playing E Phrygian here, using a D, E, F. I'm doing D, F, D, E. And I'm galloping, starting on the D ending on the F, right? And then gallop to your heart's content on the E string. I'm gonna try to play it slow. You have no idea, but this is like, take 38. I 
that's gonna have to do. If you've been wondering what I'm talking about when I say C shape G or G minor shape B, well, like I give a free lesson called the Guitar Theory Hacks. The link is in the description. If you feel like you've been stuck in the noob phase forever, sometimes for a few years, you're not alone, it happens. But this document will help a lot. So guys, thank you so much for watching. See you later. Cheers.